Hello members, in this video I'm going to take you through, as promised for quite a long time, a Microsoft 365 Business Premium Tenant and show you all the things that you are going to want to set up in this environment. This is going to assume that you have already added Microsoft 365 Business Premium into your tenant and it is ready to go with some licenses as you can see here in the admin center under billing and licenses I have 365 Business Premium subscription I have one license and I have assigned that to my own user object which for the purposes of all demonstrations here I am going to be logged in as a global administrator just for ease of demo you know that I always will tell you to log in only with the privileges that you need ideally in a real life environment with just in time uh, privileged information protection anyway let's get going on this series so what we have here is a blank tenant nothing in it only the Microsoft 365 Business Premium Subscription. I'm going to work through this wonderful learn.microsoft.com document, which takes you through all the steps that you need to go through, really. So we're going to work through this and do short chunks in short videos. And we're going to start from uh, signing in and setting up Microsoft Business Premium. So this is step one here, as you can see. As we go through, we get a nice little flow of setting up your environment. The first couple of steps are sign in and set up, then configure your security protection. Then we go through each one bit by bit. And as you go through, if you want to work through these documents yourself, you can see how you can sign in on your own or work with a Microsoft partner and even watch some videos in a guided setup process step by step so there is some really good resources available for you to work through and at the end of each page you can move on to the next step so right without further ado let's see what we've got so we've got a business premium tenant sign in and set up now we've already really set up this tenant in that we've got the business premium licenses in our tenant and we're logged into the Microsoft 365 admin center at admin.microsoft.com. What you need to do to get those licenses if you don't already have them is go to the marketplace, do a search for Microsoft 365 business premium and purchase the number of licenses that you want and assign them to your users. With that being done, what you need to do next is decide or understand and decide what kind of sign-in experience that you want your Microsoft 365 users to have. Are you still running a on-premises active directory? Uh, are you running cloud only? If so, that's ideal. That is really... Uh, if it's a new business, if it's a startup, uh, there's probably in this day and age very little compelling reasons to set up an on-premises infrastructure. Born in the cloud is the way to go if you're if you're starting from scratch. But not all businesses are in that position. Some will have legacy Active Directory, and if that's the case, you might want to synchronize your Active Directory on-premises to your Microsoft 365 tenant and your business premium licensed users. Now I'm not going to go through the process for that. I've done that before in earlier videos. I will link to that video uh, stroke video series, which was the MS 102 exam guide that I did very early on in the life of this channel. And you can go back and watch how you do all that setting up Entra ID Connect as it is now known, previously known as Azure AD Connect, and synchronizing your on-premises AD to your Microsoft 365 tenant uh, with using Entra ID. In order to effectively use a Microsoft 365 Business Premium tenant though, you're going to need to add in one of your actual domains into the tenant. 
I've done a video on this as well so but let's just go over that and if we go to setup here in the admin center then what we can do is um, let me just show all because this is looking very very different actually this is worth going through um, this is a a very very early tenant and it's it's showing you exactly the, the sort of steps that you can and or should be doing so what you will see here is that you can add or synchronize users to Microsoft Entra ID it's showing this as completed now this is essentially a blank tenant and the reason why it's showing as completed is that I have used this tenant before uh, to demonstrate the synchronization process so it actually was synchronized to uh, an AD at one point it's uh, it's it's really not anymore and I should actually break that sync but uh, let's just for the sake of argument say that we've done that step and, and again do refer back to that video um, it's giving you other instructions here which we will get to but I'll go through them in order as per the learn doc so I'm not going to dwell on those too much but what I do want to do is I want to just look in it's in settings actually do you know I always get settings and setup mixed up I digress where we want to be is domains and as you may or may not already know each Microsoft 365 tenant has what is called a tenant domain in there already and it will be in the form of the domain name dot on Microsoft dot com each and every tenant ever created has one of these the unique part being that first part the Peter rising outlook in this case now most businesses have their own domain names obviously for their business many have several or even hundreds of domains and you can add these all in right here into Microsoft 365 and you can you can even buy a domain right from here again I've covered this in the MS 102 exam guide series I'm not going to go into massive detail on these early steps I'll go into more detail as we get into further topics but let's just recap if we click on add a domain what you can do here is put your domain name in you can actually talk to an advisor here with help and support if you need to you can get a new a new domain name for free for one year and then you can go through the process so let's just imagine that I have a domain called risingpr.com I don't but I might have but I have to put something in there in order to click this next part so if I click on use this domain then what you need to do in order to prove to Microsoft that you own that domain you have the rights to it and you can add it you're going to need to go into your domain hosting control panel there are many many different domain hosting providers out there who can do this for you and may already be doing this for you so you need to find out who your uh, hosting provider is where your domains are and uh, what you need to do is you need to verify ownership of the domain by usually putting in a txt or a text record into the dns records is the way to do so you can also use an mx record which is a mail exchanger record or add a text file to the domains website so there's video instructions here as well on how you can do that we can click on continue and it shows you the values that you're going to need to put into your hosting provider to verify the, that ownership so an at sign or skip if not supported by the DNS provider the text value and the TTL which is the time to live once you've input all of those into your hosting provider click on verify and what you should see I'm going to close this because I obviously can't verify domain that I've uh, made up although it has put it in here as an incomplete setup ironically uh, but I can't verify that but that's just to show you very very quickly the process so what you would have had I done this successfully had I had a healthy uh, domain in there I would be able to in my users so if I go to my users and my active users I could go 
to these users here. Let's see. You can see that they all have very unpleasant email addresses and usernames at the moment. So jane.blogs at peterrisingoutlook.onmicrosoft.com. No business is going to want to use that. You're going to want to use that risingpr.com as an example. So adding that in and verifying it would allow me to change that username here by managing it and in the drop down had I fully verified that domain I would see that there and I could change to it a word of caution on domains and setup do be very very careful when verifying your domains into Microsoft 365 it's very very possible that you are using an on-premises email system like Microsoft Exchange on premises. If you are doing so, then you don't want to be changing your MX records. You don't want to be adding an MX record for Exchange at that point. You need to think very carefully and go through the proper Exchange hybrid configuration in order to set that up properly and correctly. So that is really the crux of getting those first steps completed. Choose what sort of identity that you're going to be running with. So it's either going to be some form of hybrid identities with synchronization from on-premises with password hash synchronization or pass-through authentication. Um, you can even still, I believe, do federation with ADFS, but I don't see why anyone would want to do that these days. Again, I'm deliberately not going into detail on these principles because you can go back to my MS100 and two exam guide and see these things in action in a lot more detail. Okay, so make those decisions and cloud uh, identity obviously being the easiest one. It's already set up nice and simple and get your domains in place. And there you go. Step one of setting up your tenant for your business premium complete.